The kitchen is the heart and arguably the most important room of the home. But unfortunately, not all kitchens get the love that they so rightly deserve. So in today's video, I'm going to be redesigning a subscriber's awkward and dated kitchen by making some pretty drastic but affordable changes. And I'm going to show you how I use architectural software to give this neglected room a highly optimized, bright and minimalist makeover. This home belongs to Jordan and Alicia, and it measures approximately 100 square feet counter to counter. In Jordan's email, he mentioned that because of food allergies, he and Alicia spend a lot of time cooking restaurant quality meals at home. However, this kitchen in their new home feels too small for two people to work in, and as they're expecting their first child after being recently married, they've given themselves a $20,000 budget to give this space a much needed renovation. So my plan is to attempt to fix this space by coming up with an affordable concept that will make this room feel as pleasant to cook in as it always should have been to start with. I started out by modeling the kitchen in SketchUp with the rough dimensions that Jordan and Alicia provided, but unfortunately for me, the US used the Imperial system, so I had to convert everything into the metric system that I'm used to. After extruding up the walls, you notice that there are two built-in pantries, with one off the kitchen and one off the adjoining dining area, and as I modelled the cabinetry and existing appliances, I couldn't help but notice how much larger they are when compared to those here in the UK. It seems that most American kitchens have generous standalone range cookers with over-the-range microwaves, which are something that we simply don't get here in the UK, which combine the function of a microwave and a kitchen extract into one somewhat compact unit. I then continued to model in the dishwasher, double sink, pantry shelving and window, which is already fitted with some lovely white Venetian blinds, as well as the countertop breakfast bar and an interesting bulkhead that runs around the space. After modeling in the adjoining dining area and family room, this gave me a general feel for the existing space, and it quickly became clear to me what I could do to get the very most out of it as possible. One thing that Jordan noted is that the existing pantry is actually the perfect size for a fridge freezer, so this was an obvious win to free up some more counter space, but despite doing this, somehow the kitchen still feels a bit small. The reason for this is because the existing layout has corner cabinets, and these are arguably the number one space waster in kitchens, as the insides are difficult to access, and even when they're fitted with expensive pull-out fittings, they're still incredibly inefficient. This layout essentially means that three sections of counter space can only be occupied by one person at one time, which may be fine if only one person is using the space, but it's probably why Jordan and Alicia find it so difficult to cook together, as bumping into one another when you're handling hot or wet items is nothing but a recipe for disaster. Despite removing cabinets seeming somewhat counterintuitive, I decided to relocate and replumb the sink and dishwasher to an island, and by doing so, it effectively reduces the countertop and cabinetry cost and creates much more floor space to move around in. Making this change in layout now means that all the cabinets can be easily accessed, and as a bonus, it creates a large space between the two countertops, which meant that I could pull the island inwards to create more space on the other side, for something like storage, or simply to allow the breakfast bar to have enough space in the dining area for some proper bar stools. This layout immediately makes the space much more social and all of the cabinets much easier to reach, and the island sink provides the perfect opportunity for interaction when serving drinks or when doing the dishes, something that's likely going to be appreciated when there's a screaming baby in a high chair over on the other side. In most cases, existing cabinetry can be reused, but as this space is in need of a proper makeover, I emptied the space and started from scratch to come up with an aspirational concept that optimizes every single square inch of this kitchen. Firstly, as their existing fridge has only one large door, it actually isn't going to work very well in this location, as the wide door swing opens into the passageway. So because of this, I switched it out for a more contemporary double-doored option with smaller door swings, and because there's still space above it, I modelled in a top cabinet to house some less frequently used items. 
In my mind, it made the most sense for the hob and oven to be placed in the same location as before, as there's likely already going to be an existing extract duct there. However, instead of picking a standalone range cooker, I decided to choose an integrated oven, hob, and extractor fan for a cleaner look that sits flush with the existing cabinetry and countertop, which is much easier to use as it's almost one continuous surface and it leaves less space for crumbs of food to get stuck in. And above all else, I just think it it looks a lot more premium without actually being any more expensive. Despite over-the-range microwaves being ideal for small spaces, I personally feel that they kind of compromise a minimalist aesthetic, as they don't always look that great and they're also so prominent. Because of this, I decided to go for an under-the-counter option that utilizes a drawer rather than a door. However, heavy microwave users may want to just stick with an over-the-range option or simply sacrifice some countertop space for a wall-mounted or countertop option instead. The cabinet doors I settled on are the super affordable white Vidingue doors from Ikea, and when designing for wall cabinets, smaller double doors always make the most sense, as they reduce the risk of getting a door swing to the face. Then for the base cabinets, large drawers on push-open, soft-close runners easily allow you to access hard-to-reach items at the back of the deeper cabinets, without requiring handles, for a super practical, super clean look. Because of its prominent location, the island has the opportunity to become more of a feature, so I decided to go for an undermount double sink that's fixed to a pale quartz countertop with a waterfall edge, which, despite being significantly more expensive than laminate, it does add value to your home, whilst being super hard wearing and pleasant to both use and look at at the same time. This island will house the new integrated dishwasher and double sink, with the space under the sink being the perfect spot for hiding unsightly bins. For the tap, rather than going for a sleek fixed option, this time I decided to add in a flexible pull-out option, which is great for washing frustratingly large pans, something that keen cooks will appreciate, and then I added in three beautiful Muto fibre stools to the breakfast bar. Lastly, the final thing to do was swap out the old lighting for some spotlights, and I refloored the space with a pale grey linoleum, as it's a super durable, affordable, and sustainable option that makes a natural transition with the existing timber floor at the junction with the family room, and after putting in the final matching drawers and doors to the pantry, the design was pretty much done and ready to go through the final rendering process. SketchUp's V-Ray plugin does a great job of applying material and light to the model, but as these renders are essentially simulating a photograph, they do need editing to look at their best. Unlike how we perceive things with our eyes, photographs don't tend to capture dynamic range as well, so you do have to manually brighten the shadows and lower the highlights in order to get the most natural looking image, so I did this simply by using masks and adjustment layers. Likewise, with colour, renders don't always come out quite as you'd like them to, as you may want to show a particular type of weather or time of day, which you didn't get right in the model. So I made some adjustments in a similar way to get the image looking exactly as I envisioned it, and after touching up a few blemishes using the brush and clone stamp tools, I repeated this process across all of the images until I was happy with them, and with that, the final renders were done. I think this concept goes to show how much kitchen layouts have an impact on how usable they feel. When compared to how small and dark the kitchen felt before, this space now feels bright and spacious, with the added benefit of creating enough space to comfortably accommodate a breakfast bar. And now, because there's much more floor area, there's a lot more space for Jordan and Alicia to cook in this kitchen together. It's unfortunate that so often kitchens are designed to cram in as much cupboard space as possible, without really giving any consideration to how they're used. And I think that homes are far better off when they're designed to bring households together, by facilitating and encouraging the moments that we enjoy with our families and our close friends. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one.